And hello there, everyone. Good to see ya. Paul Tranny here. Back again. Hopefully you're not sick of me, but uh, this is going to be really fun. Hello, Robert, Christelle, Wade, Michelle, Fury, Susan. Thanks for hanging out with me. We're going to have fun in Photoshop, right? Because um, that's what uh, today is all about. It's Friday. I thought we'd just have a good time. Thank you so much, everybody who joined me earlier today. Figured out my problem. Just needed to do a quick restart. I think there was an update that got installed uh, last night. So that did not help matters. Uh, but really, why are we doing this, huh? What is this all about? Tell me this. Let me just turn that off and I'll switch over. You can see my screen right here. So I think you'd end up discovering your style uh, by having fun. And yes, Sean, I fixed my keyboard because uh, yeah, basically I just needed to do a restart. I think something got installed last night. I was rendering out something in After Effects. I was really pushing it to the limits. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea. It's like discover your style by basically having fun. So we're just gonna have some fun today. Hopefully that's cool with you because that's how, how I think you learn best. So that'll be a blast. I got a ton of other quotes in here, right? Uh, uh, be brave enough to be bad at something new. So let's be bad at things. It's okay. It's not the bi that big of a deal, right? Can we all agree it's okay to be horrible at something because you know you're gonna get better, right? Uh, but just kind of trying to inspire myself, uh, I would just kind of go out and uh, just like pull a bunch of quotes that just like kind of get you in the mood. So that's what I did. Uh, this is a lot of Pinterest stuff. Hope you guys don't mind, but we're going to go ahead and get inspired. Um, I like these fun quotes right in here. Uh, I think my problem is I have a really fantastic bad ideas. So uh, I see no good reason to act my age. Huh? Why not? So that's the whole idea today. Um, where's my favorite quote in here? Uh, I got to find it. Where is it? Oh yeah, <laughs> every time you get dressed, remember if you die, that's your ghost outfit forever. <laughs> that made me laugh and I'm like, ah, I'm feeling better, right? Right, I'm not brave enough for politics. Yeah, General, read the room, that's good, General Kenobi. Just read the room too. You know, we're gonna have fun, but we're also gonna read the room. We know everybody's from different political views, all that fun stuff where our goal is to have fun. And speaking of that, I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts. Fight milk, fight milk. Who's, who likes fight milk? I got my fight milk right here. Let's do this, okay? Uh, oh, the avocado one is so true as well. So hopefully everybody had a chance to read at least some of those. I think it's awesome. Uh, wherever that avocado one. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Eat me now too late, avocados. All right, so we're inspired. That's what I do. I follow my favorite artists, right? I would, I go out to Pinterest a lot. I go out to Behance, right? Because Behance gives me a feed every day as well, right? But I just kind of go from there. It's like, hey, what are cool people working on right now, huh? Like, what's some of the cool stuff? You know, and then I just start pinning it. And again, I'm just doing things that I like. I love glows, for instance. I love adding glows to statues. That's just me. I love this weird stuff. So I'll type up like surreal art and see what I get. Get a lot of this weird stuff. Totally into it, right? Weird, I love it. Little sci-fi there, it's perfect, right? So this will be kind of more, I guess, my style. But again, I'm just gonna have fun and that's the goal of all of this. We can deal with some geometric, uh, some uh, sort of prismatic colors are really fun to work with, right? You guys know I love flowers. Some flowers might be in the mix. But that's the idea. Let's just go out there, find what you like. This is lighting related, so I'm just getting inspired based on what I see out here. I love this stuff. This stuff's really easy to do in Photoshop. It's actually, it's easier to do in Photoshop than it is in Illustrator, just so you know, okay? All right, so we've got inspired. Let's get this body started, okay? And yeah, I'm actually tired, guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a little tired. <laughs> That's why I was like, I gotta get my fight milk shirt on. And uh, <laughs> Sean read that quote. That's funny. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah. <laughs> some days, some days you're just like, oh, I didn't sleep that well. That's not good, but you know what? It's Friday, I'm here with my best friends. That's you guys, my coworkers. You are all my coworkers, right? Again, 
Discover your style by having fun. I'm just gonna play with this quote really fast just to kind of get the blood flowing. Okay, I just have a bevel and emboss and a gradient and a gradient on it. Okay. Um let's do this. Let's do this right in here, down here. Because again, I want to add more color to it. I'm gonna add a gradient map to this really fast. Gradient map, we'll clip it, make it a clipping mask, bam. We have that tinted, but we gotta be, go beyond that as well. Team weird, team crazy, you know? It's okay to inject a little fun into your life. Um, yeah, fail better each day into it, you know? It's like some days you're struggling. You're like, man, I gotta, st I gotta step up my game. Okay, I don't want a gradient map. Do I want a gradient map? Uh, let's take a look at this again. Let's go down here. Yeah, I want a gradient map. Heck yeah. Gradient map. Picking a different color. Well, this should be changing a lot more than it is. Let's convert this to a smart object. There we go. Ah, oh, so glad you guys are watching, right? This is, these are the little things that throw you for a loop. So basically, I have this gradient, and let's pick the wildest rainbow gradient. Okay, rainbow gradient, guess what? I'm only seeing red. What's the deal, right? Uh, for some reason, and reasons are unbeknownst to me, I need to convert this to a smart object. As soon as I do, bam, we can see that pops. So again, that's all I wanted to do, convert it to a smart object, and now this gradient map is being mapped to all these colors and I'm just playing around guys just so you know just because I can um, but we'll actually pull in some photos in a second go to the filter gallery maybe I'll try something metallic or chrome like as you can see right here uh, maybe a little bit more smooth again just trying some things yeah that's okay hey you know what you win some and you lose some but it's all about trying uh, different things. Again, since this is a smart object and I applied that filter gallery, I can always go in there and turn that off. And now we get those smooth colors. I just wanted to kind of try something different uh, for this text. All right, that looks probably best. All right, let's move on. Uh, I pulled in some images as well based on uh, balloon effect. Yeah, this, this is kind of like balloon type, by the way. Um, uh, I would, actually what I would do is I would actually, and I've done this before, let's take a look at some other fun uh, gradient treatments that I did, right? So here, look at this craziness. Just to kind of pick this apart, this right here, we'll double click on it. These are just a bunch of lines. A vector small object that lives inside of, um, an Illustrator file, right? So I just had some fun creating these gradients with a bunch of crazy lines. That's what I did. Probably uses use the blend tool, okay? I have that, what do you do? You then liquefy it. So jump in, here's liquefy, right? Here's liquefy, sorry this is a little funky, right? Probably my recent update that I did, but I can kind of pull this around. The reason you see a shadow image is I'm showing the backdrop but I could start to pull this around a little bit more. So you create those lines, start to pull things around and get an interesting texture like this, click OK. And guess what? This is what I wanted to show since you mentioned this sort of like a balloon-like texture. What that is missing is it's missing some highlights. Okay, this has a lot going on, but I have this lovely filter gallery. So this filter gallery, if I double click on it, is also using Chrome. So I just used Chrome and then I punched it up with some levels and different things. And now we have this cool effect, which I think is really cool. What do you do? You create something that you like. Um, okay, cool. I don't know why, but you love it. So, and again, by the way, this is also inspired just cause I was going around and like, oh, can I, can I create this texture? Can I create something like that? which is a holographic pattern. So that's kind of what I was doing there. This is like trying out these new things that I might get inspired by, okay? 
So that's how that came about, just so you know. But now we have this cool texture made based on all these different effects and then layering these two together, right? And now we have a cool background we can work with. All right. Yes, uh, you know, um, sorry about that. Reverb Mike, I thought you'd I thought you'd appreciate this shirt. Something something about it said, you know what? Reverb Mike would like this shirt. Who knows who knows where Fight Milk's from? Where is Fight Milk from? Where's that? It's my Friday shirt. All right, we have our awesome gradient right there. There we go. Let's you know, let's just get rid of this other stuff. I would just throw I would just make this white by the way. All right, there we go. We got a trippy style. Done and done. Okay, so U Uriel, this is a uh, masterclass, so I apologize for going kind of fast. Um, but uh, those effects, all these effects I actually did in previous um, live streams, and I'll just give you a chance to kind of take a snapshot of it. And like I said, that background, was made based on a gradient, and the magic is using liquify. So just liquify a gradient, and then you have all those fun effects. After that, just throw some levels on top of it, right? So oh, actually, not only levels. You need to uh, add chrome to it, and then boost up the levels is what I did, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, I just described that twice. And now you know. And we got a cool trippy thing going on now. All right. So I'll take that. I'll put it away. I might use that background, right? Because I have a bunch of images. Just like you saw here, again, I might get inspired by something else that I see. You know, this stuff. I love this. You guys know I love flowers. So that's uh, that's kind of the area I'm going to lead, uh, lead with. So I pulled down a bunch of images, right? And by the way, where did these images come from? All I used is I used the new plugins panel, right? So go to that plugins panel and then download something like free stock search, right? Or any one of those other stock search um, plugins. And then you can just type in, um, you know, whatever you want. Woman, hands, I did flowers, right? And there they are available to you. So this is perfect. Jump in here. Hey, here's some flowers. Yeah, boom. The pro version gives you the high res versions, which is nice. So again, paste in those flowers. I could potentially use these flowers. All right, so I have that image. I have this image. Zoom out. Not bad, a little dramatic, but I'm into it. I just love these beautiful images right in here, okay? This, we could have fun with swirly colors around her face. I love the drama in this one, right? I like this one a lot, sort of like more of the full body. Uh, and then we have this awesome photo. Okay, so let's have some fun. Michelle says flowers. Thank you for saying flowers. Uh... Okay, what is what is fight milk? Because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Clever Devil and it says it's from TV. It's it's the first alcoholic dairy-based protein drink by by bodyguards for bodyguards. It's from uh, um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Okay, Mac and Charlie make fight milk. <laughs> they make it. So fight milk is uh, from it's always sunny in Philadelphia, and it makes me laugh. All right, I have that. Awesome. Let's just have some fun, guys. Let's go in here. And you want some more magic? Hey, we got it. We do things the easy way right in here. Remove background. Haven't done it with this image. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's move it over some. Right? Let's go remove background. Cross our fingers. If I even clicked on it, you do have to click on the button. Bam! Magic. It's done. Not really. But it's close to being done. Right? Now we can see in here. We can grab a brush. Just reset it back to zoop. Get that spot right there. 
Uh, make sure we got that spot. Double click on it because it made this layer mask. Right, it did such a good job. It actually recognizes her as a as a person, as an individual, who she is. She's a person. She's not a picture. But the thing is, is it recognizes portraits, right? So it knows where there's hair and where there's gonna be harder edges. Cause it already cut that out for me. That's brand new, right? I hardly have to do anything in here. I could use refine edge. I, again, I typically do this by default. I hardly need to, but I'll go in <clears throat> and just kind of roll over that just for kicks. Okay, there we go. Have it, click okay, done, done. Here's our lady. And uh, we can have fun with the background. We can have more fun with more elements of this as well. As well. Sean, I missed your explanation, but I sh I'm sure it's awesome. All right, so we have Girl with Flowers. We have these fun gradients that we can kind of bend around her as well. A number of things we can do. Do you want to do Girl with Flowers? Oh, Kara loves It's Always Sunny. Yeah, it just cracks me up. Okay. Uh, I will jump that layer. I'm gonna remove that, uh, delete that layer mask so we have that background. <clears throat> we'll pull this out, zoop, and uh, kind of clean this up for you. I wanted to do like some swirls with this initial design. Okay, so I actually wanted to kind of use some of those gradients. All right, go Paul, hurry up, make it happen, impress me, right? Impress me, show me something cool. That's what everybody is saying. Convert that to a smart object. Have fun with liquify, which again, you know this is my favorite thing to do. Jump in here, big brush, big swirly brush, right? I kind of want this to kind of maybe wrap around her. Let's go to pinching. So we can pinch parts of this. So I'm pinching. It's gonna basically tighten up that spot right there. And we can just hold down the Alt key, or excuse me, Alt, the Option or Alt key to kind of make this part like big and bubbly. But that's all I'm doing. I'm just kind of messing around, guys. Please don't take me serious, right? We can pull this in. What gets really kind of crazy is that uh, This will change based on, oh, let's undo that last one. Based on, um, you know, the size of this document. So I could push this around. Now, what did I say earlier? You could turn on the backdrop so you could show other layers behind or in front. What did I call her? I called her lady. There's our lady. There she is. So I can start to craft this swirl around her. Right, it's going to go around her shoulder, kind of behind her. We'll push this content down, right, these swirls, and do something like that. Let's make it twirl. Oh, maybe not that way. Option key. Yeah, why not? Cool. Click OK. Oh, we got a crazy swirl right there. Um, you had to put on your sunglasses. Oh, Michelle, you are too kind. You're so kind to me. I, I'm not worthy. I am not worthy. But what I am going to do is cut her out. So let's just, let's say, for instance, this is what I can do. And I hope you guys know this because I actually didn't know this for years. Hold down the option key and you can click and duplicate that mask onto this other layer just by holding down the option key and dragging it up. Now I've duplicated it, easy peasy. Uh, guess what, we can invert it, Command I, there we go. And then we can start playing with the depth. Hit B for brush. I wanna bring it back, so white reveals, so I'm painting with white, and now we have that kind of coming around sort of in front of her like that. Okay, so that's the, that's the thought. That's what I was thinking. I don't know what you guys think. Heck, let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of more of this. Zoop. Get rid of that whole chunk, because I made two versions. So we have this background version. 
that uh, I can change the this to overlay and then I can turn on this one just because I kind of want it to, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to change the look and see what would happen. All right, let's change out the brush, get a soft round pressure on opacity, right? Look at that, make it nice and smooth. Now we're adding depth to this, kind of pushing that back. It still looks a little flat if you ask me, right? But it's a start. Anyways, hello, Aaron Fisher. Good to have you here. Welcome. Maybe I'll just eliminate some of that. And I can go in and play with this liquify a little bit more. Right, this needs to go down. Maybe it shows more of the background. I don't know. Something kind of like that. Click OK. All right, so that's one idea. Maybe it's working, maybe it isn't. Um, we could do a couple things with this now, okay? We can work with color. Uh, color on this, if I wanted to splash some, so if I really wanna make her look like she's in this scene, I need to bring some of those colors onto her body. So that means new layer above the lady. There we go, and we'll just do color. Let's we'll call this color, and uh, let's go to town. Sample that hot pink, right? It's a clipping mask, B for brush, taking the flow down some, and uh, we could just kind of start painting on her shoulder, right? Because that's where that pop of color is coming from. How you guys doing today, huh? The gradient is hugging her. How nice is that? Nice hugging gradient, right? That has a little bit of a glow. It's already looking better. Again, the goal is to have fun, folks. Is everybody having a good day, huh? Uh, give the swirl a drop shadow. <clears throat> Love it, Uriel. This swirl needs like so much depth. It's ridiculous. It's flat. Look at that. Look at how flat this is. We're going to get to that, but you're exactly right. Another thing I would actually try is uh, I would go ahead and uh, drop in a black and white and clip that to her, right? It, is she black and white? And then it's, uh, again, that's just something I'm playing with. I don't know if it's working. But again, that's the whole goal is just to play around. I encourage you guys to just... Again, play with Photoshop. This, if I go with black and white, it needs like so much more uh, contrast, right? So we'll do, it's maximum black. To be honest with you, I don't use high contrast blue filter. Ooh, look at that, that's freaky. High contrast red. Right, I don't, I don't use this that much, but this does allow you to kind of punch up the skin tones and then for her hair, uh, might be darker if I could find out which one of these might be closest to her hair, right? How I could do that is I could actually select, click, and then I can see, oh, that's the blues. I grabbed a blue pixel, that's red. Okay, and I can work playing with this brightness and contrast. But really, I would actually jump in and I would add a levels to this and I would adjust the levels, right? Let's really just punch up all of those and just give her more contrast like so. I don't know if this is working. Getting my swirl on. Uh, put the gradient below her elbow. Another good idea. This is why you guys make me a better designer. Right? Great idea. I don't really know where it is. Let's just drop this opacity down. There it is. In fact, let's get more exact. Just grabbing that shadow. All right, let's see if this does, oop, see if this does anything. Make a backup, crank up that. Let's just, I guess, fill it with white. 
Oh, excuse me. Fill it with black. Yeah, that needs a little more work. Right, but good call. All right. Throw some more levels back there. Punch it up. And then get really quiet. Okay. Let's clip this color to her. And then we can play with some more, some more color and some bursts and different things. Uh, let's, we're going to do a separate version that has a bunch of flowers, right? You kind of get the idea for this, right? Probably what I would do is what I did earlier with that other piece. So this part, let's just grab this layer um, and let's give this a lovely shine. Filter gallery, I'm drinking my fat milk. Flowers, <laughs> flowers in chat. Okay, calm down, jeez, I'll do it, okay, jeez. You guys are so demanding. Um, all right. So uh, keep in mind right over here, if this doesn't punch it up enough, you're gonna have to increase your, your lights and darks. Uh, but what you could also do is you could add a couple of effects. So I could add two chromes to it, but really what I wanna do is I wanna add a plastic wrap. Look at that, that plastic wrap gives me that depth that I want. And again, we're just gonna use this to kinda punch it up, change this to say lighten for instance. Maybe it's not gonna work because I'm realizing it's kinda not, not working. Right, let's throw some contrast in there, throw levels, crank it, crank it, right? So we're just trying to add like highlights to that. Yeah, it's not working. It's okay, there's our first piece. We can work on that some more. People want, they, they demand flowers. I'm gonna do one more thing because this desperately needs it. Okay, this is the last thing I will do, I promise. Um, B for brush. Get rid of this part. Okay. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Say these. Yeah, that's right. Smart objects within smart objects. With this one now, I'm gonna blur it. So filter, blur. Uh, let's go to blur gallery. We're gonna do field blur. Because that background is blurry, so I need to make sure for this field blur. Oh, not field blur. I don't want field blur. Luckily, right over here, hey, you don't need to exit out of this. You could just uncheck that. I'm going to do tilt shift. Tilt shift is going to give me these bars. So I can say, hey, you know what? Make this longer. So it's going to be in focus here and then out of focus back here. Uh, vice versa, sorry. Focus here, and then it drops out of focus like that. So that's what I'm going for. Just kind of have it drop, have the focus kind of drop away from her, right? Further away, it's going to be blurry. You get the idea. Done. Oh, good. Thanks, Wade. I just, you know, we need to hang out, Wade. We just need to hang out just because we can. It would be fun. Um, yeah, by the way, you're going to make this stuff and hopefully you'll start to build out a library of these assets. So this is the only reason that makes me effective. It's the fact that I have a ton of these splashes of color that I could use at any time. Okay. These light leaks, these lens flares, uh, you know, this sort of cool, like light leak, you know what you want to get rid of the darks just go to lighten right and now we could have this light leak somewhere i don't know where down at the bottom right you get the idea um 
But yeah, there's also these lovely, like these, these, I use this actually a lot because this just makes things look kind of cool. Again, same process. We're going to get rid of the dark. So we just change it to lighten. Now we have these lovely little like um, the bokeh effects, right? That we could start adding to this because this needs a lot more. She needs like, there needs to be sparkles in this. I don't quite have sparkles. I have some sparkles. Here's some more, right? Um, but yeah. Here's, again, another gradient fill that I made a while ago that I might consider using. That's a little much, but that's okay, right? Okay, let's move on. Because I want to get into my next drawing. Let's throw this away. It's been 30 minutes. I've worked on this. This is, this is done. We take all this content, group it, right? And now we have a design. We'll just call this design two. This is hardly design one, but you get the idea. Uh, I wanted to do something with hands. So this is very much like a Paul style. So this is what I was thinking. I found these hands are like really cool. Just search for them in free stock, uh, in our free stock search to pro hands, right? There they are. So try it out for yourself. These were really cool too. I've already done something like this before, but uh, I like these hands reaching up because I, I think I just like the drama of it, right? But we could bring these in and potentially use them, okay? I like these hands. Let's just rasterize this layer and let's move this up a little like so. We'll do the same thing. Properties panel, remove background right here. Click, cross your, cross your own fingers and then you can see what we have there. Let's add a... Just lovely background. There we are. We'll take these. These will just be our backups. We don't need all these extra hands. All right. Uh, miss. Miscellaneous. Just put that up there. All right. Uh, something else, oh, Larissa, you are too kind. Something else that like really inspired me, and I've had these for a while on my desktop, right? Out here, had these. Look at these, gorgeous. I love this, uh, these uh, old-fashioned botanical illustrations. Love them, right? These I got from... Uh, I want to show you that later. I might have gotten them from this biodiversity heritage library on Flickr. Okay. So a lot of museums have these free illustrations for you to use, which is awesome. So I jumped in there. I grabbed some. I've already, I already have a, a folder full of these, but jump out there, grab something. Hey, this one, why not? You get the idea. Download the original. Um, and uh, then there are others. By the way, I went to this site, which is the Smithsonian, actually has 3D models. So I was like, oh, this is awesome as well. Like, do I do something with this? Could totally do something with George Washington, right? They scan these 3D works in, and then you can sure enough download them, right? We're not doing any dimension today, but sure enough, OBJ, that's what I'm looking for. Full res George Washington or something else as I go back. You guys get the idea. But those are all part of uh, Smithsonian, which I think is super cool. Okay. All right. So that's done. Where are our flowers? Click. There's our flowers. Oh, look at all these flowers. Here's all the ones that I have cut out. Let's get to work. And watch, I, I won't talk the rest of the time. <laughs> I'm like, let's get to work. And then I'm just like deathly, just super quiet. Here's some uh, standard photos that uh, I've cut out. So these are our photo of flowers, photos. And then there's, of course, these ones that um, I was just talking about. There they are, different sizes. These are tricky to cut out. This one's easy because it's on white, right? But these other ones are going to be more difficult, right? This one's going to be super difficult. I would do my best by um, 
probably cutting it out f as closely as possible. I just want to get rid of that border. I'd want to get rid of this shadow right here. In fact, I don't even need the vase. So let's cut that out like so. It's just not going to be easy, right? At the end of the day, if it's worth it, uh, you know, maybe it's not going to be super easy, just so you know. But here it is. Uh, shout out to Larissa from Brazil. Into it. Select. We're going to go ahead and do a color range. We're going to see what happens. We're going to have to really finely tune this, right? So we get an idea of what we're dealing with. By the way, if you hit the control key, I usually zoom in, but if you hit the control key, you can switch from the actual to the um, what's being sampled, right? Uh, if you hold down the shift key, you can go in and just grab those little dots. But it's grabbing the rest of those flowers as well. So this might just get you like part of the way. There. Right? It's a thing, guys. It is a thing. Whew. Right, let's click OK. All right, that's fine. We're going to hold down the Option key since I want the flowers. We can click and it's just going to keep uh, what was not selected. Because nine times out of ten, I feel like I'm selecting the background um, and not not the image. So the Option key will, will flip your selection. Jump in here. Let's just do some work, folks. We have a deadline. Thanks for hang on, and hanging out with us. Uh, we have master classes all today and just we're just doing cool stuff. Big thank you to Terry and of course Val. Up after me is Jason's doing some animated gifts. Oh, oh man, tell me about it. That's what I want to do. You make some animated gifts. Like seriously, I'm not I'm not I'm not joking around when I say that by the way. I actually do want to create animated gifts. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have Wacom, or if you have uh, Photoshop on the iPad, I think it's a thousand times easier to select stuff. All right, guys. I'm gonna do this really loose because we don't have much time, and because I might not be using all of this. You ever spend a lot of time on cutting something out, out and you're like, this isn't working? That happens to me a lot. There we go. B, bam, bam, bam. Let's paint, folks. Let's paint. Let's invert this. Let's go new layer. X key will flip your foreground and background color. Look at that mess. But I'll just go in and paint. If anybody knows of a faster way, I'm like all ears. So the great thing about Jason's live stream is because it lends itself right into this one, right? We are creating images that we can then turn around and animate, which is exactly what I was doing earlier. Uh, what, what was actually kind of rendering out overnight was uh, an animation that came from a still image, right? That I may or may not turn into a GIF. I think it's going to be too big to, to be a GIF. All right, we got it. We're done. We're done, Paul. Stop. Let go. Let go of the pen, Paul. Let go. Right? Let go. That's still a mess. It's OK. Again, this, this one I might not even I might not even work with, to be honest with you. Might not even use it. But again, I was just kind of showing you how to cut out things. And I thought I'd be faster at it. You know, don't you hate that? You're like, oh, I thought this would come out much quicker. Right? And again, it all just depends on your image. The thing is, is like I'm cutting out an image. I already have this one that I can use. This lovely one. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Right? That one might be easier to use. In this case, I would use the magic wand tool and I'd make it contiguous. So one continuous uh, surface. Click there. Of course, we got to click in all these individual little spots. They'll become super evident in a second, right? We'll know which spots we miss. But 
This one already is gonna be five times better. Option click, boom, there we are. Let's bring it up, we'll put it on black and uh, you can see what we have there. All right. Oh, I gotta hurry, folks. Yeah, don't you love that texture? What I wanna do is, um, I love the bla this black and white look of these hands. And that's what I wanna do is kinda have this light. And like, you're hardly gonna be able to tell that these are photos, right? But that's the goal, is just kinda have those floating in and out of the hands. All right, that's good. That's fine. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. It's looking a little rough in parts. Um. <laughs> Photoshop Masterclass, if you know of a faster way, let me know. Exactly right. Believe me, if you know of a faster way, because you know sometimes there's just like, there's no faster way. When it comes down to just selecting some pixels, if you want it to be exact, honestly, you're gonna use the most basic tool, which is your lasso tool. That's gonna give you your best selection. Um, so yeah, there's, in some cases, there's magic little shortcuts, which we love to show off. In others, yeah, there's not, right? Again, just slick to the lasso, click to the lasso, cut that part out, fill it with black. But that, that, I did make that sound funny. All right. We're good, we're good. Good enough. Uh, yeah, pen tool would also work out well. Like, I realize I use the pen tool when I don't have a Wacom. Uh, but if I wanted this with super sharp edges, totally use the pen tool. Another thing you could try, let's, since you mentioned that, um, let's see if this works. This is brand new as well. Let's see if it's in here. Okay, so. Let's see, or I don't know if I'm gonna be leaking information. Technology previews. Uh, enable content aware tracing tool. So, and then restart Photoshop. Good thing that's already checked. Okay, so sometimes you might need to add it using the customized toolbar. So that's what's going on there. So this is brand new, click right out here. Here it is, content aware tracing tool because I've already modified this. So this is what I was looking for. Typically it's under the pen tool, but unless you modified it. Now what this does is it's gonna go through and it's gonna start snapping to that edge. So if, we'd, uh, if we wanted to uh, maybe try this first image, Okay, I have it selected. Sure, we can make this a shape. It's, it's, uh, I might be doing something wrong, but currently it is not, uh, it's not snapping at all. So it's not even, I'm not getting anything, but that's why it's a technology preview. So it'll act like a magnetic line and start attaching itself to that hand. Okay, so check that out when you get a chance. You guys get the idea. Uh, and align edges. Nope. Anyways, I've seen it work. 
and you just have to trust me okay maybe you can get it to work let's move on there we go let's, let's drop in some flowers sorry for all that deviation I have that stuff All this stuff. Okay, let's do this. Go. So there are some levels on there. I kind of want to see how much, how much I have, how, how many gray pixels I have in there. Vines, perfect. Um, Yes, thank you. Magnetic lasso. It's a magnetic pen. Thank you, Carol. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> That's all I needed to say. Why did I make it sound so complex? It wasn't that complex. All right, let's do some things. You guys having fun though? You guys having fun in life? I hope you are, right? I'm gonna do some in and out right in here. So typically means uh, creating a little uh, a little sandwich, all right? So that's what I would typically do right here. I would have these hands. Hands look pretty good. We will make it a smart object. Duplicate that layer, put it on top. For this one, we will go in and Maybe I'll use a quick selection tool. We just want to select these fingers that are going to be in front. Boom. There we go. Got a little in and out action going on. That seems to work. This would go much faster than it's going, but that's okay. Let's play with this vine. Have that bend around like so. We have any questions? Uh, fast if you alt click on flowers and mask and use brush on second hand layer. Nice. I'm not sure what you mean by second hand layer, by the way. What are you talking about? But you're probably right. Okay, so that's gonna wrap around here. Again, layer mask, B for brush, probably just like you're talking about. And then I'll just kind of determine what I want in front and what I want behind. So let's go like this, just remove it there. Like that.
<sighs> All right, so you like where I'm going with this. This needs a ton of lighting, but I'm always going to do that probably last. And I, I'm going to do that by putting everything in a layer group and then adding um, some adjustment layers to it. Okay, so we'll duplicate this again. Get rid of, delete that layer mask, right? I have it the size that I want. Here's this new one. We'll flip horizontal. Maybe flip vertical. Rotate it. So we need to do this part kind of like down here. So it needs to kind of connect. There, did I twist that enough? Did I twist it enough? Puppet warp, stretch that out. Again, I'm already gonna remove this part anyways. So let's do that now. Take off that little piece. Option key, remove that. This part's gonna be darker. Like I said, I take all this content and let me get some of this in here. going to do uh, left hand, right hand. There we go. Left. Option drag to duplicate that layer. Select that layer. Command I. So now we have our right hand and our left hand that we get to play with. So we'll turn on these. We have that, that. We have the fingers for the left hand. Fingers. Okay. Here's our flower that I wanted to play with, which needs to go um, behind the left hand, but in actually probably behind both hands is what I was thinking. But let's split this one up now. Are you ready for this? We're doing a lot of in and out, creating some depth. So let's do that with the right hand now. Let's see how steady I am with just the lasso. Okay, but this presents a little bit of uh, an issue. Invert. Fill with. There we go. Uh, the issue is that this this line is blurry, right? So this is blurry, but then when you start selecting things, it's going to be like super crisp. So we're not fooling anybody. Jeez, I only have a couple minutes. Ah, right, a number of ways I could do that. I could actually select that mask. I can go into uh, blur and I could do a Gaussian blur on it, right? So we could go ahead and soften that up, soften up that selection, right? Because it needs to have that blurriness. Okay, so now we have the right hand, right hand fingers and the left hand fingers, right? We have those two, we'll grab that flower, we'll put it there's our flower, we'll put it in between those two, and that's that's kind of what we're going for. Left hand will go on top. And now we can start bending this, bending this to our will. I'm not sure if these are the right flowers for this spot as well. I uh, kind of wanted to have a red like this pink, pinkish color. There we go. All right, so uh, down to my last minute, I'm gonna jump in here. I would throw on levels on this, clip it to just those flowers. Um, 
make sure so again this is how i get to control the brightness and the darkness of those of those uh of those flowers we won't worry about the blacks that don't match up they will later i just made the hands brighter so they're easier to see we'll jump in here make this soft pressure use a little wacom and we can just start removing that layer mask so it has a little light up there and that right there maybe down here but then it's going to be dark in that spot but you guys get the idea that is it for me um i'm going to work on this some more so apologies i didn't get very far on this one i think it's going to be pretty awesome and uh hopefully you guys appreciate it once it's done but hope you like what uh what i did earlier we're kind of playing around there playing around there and honestly just playing around so thank you moat the void golden rolls marcia and Chris and everyone and everybody on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Saida, I see ya. Muriel, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Appreciate you. Have a beautiful day. And I'm going to turn over to the one roll T only uh, uh, Jason Levine. Thanks so much, everyone.